Right. So uh, today, uh, as I mentioned last time, the topic that we will be discussing will be uh, heat conduction with internal uh, heat generation. Internal heat generation. So uh, do you know or do you happen to know any examples where uh, this concept will be applicable like on an industrial scale or a practical scale, which is uh, already in use? Do you have any idea about it? Uh, can, can you repeat the question, sir? Uh, uh, what I asked is uh, this concept of, uh, you know, heat conduction with uh, uh, the provision of internal heat generation. So do you happen to know any examples or applications which are already in use? Uh, sir, uh, uh, reactors, reactors, uh, internal heat generation might be there. Right. So uh, the simplest uh, one, what we can take is uh, any process where we have electrical conductors, because there would be some heat generation which is occurring through it. And because some heat generation is occurring through, uh, uh, I mean, which is occurring in a process, there might be some heat which will be generated because of that uh, conduction. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, in that case, where we do not want our uh, heat generated through this to get accumulated, but we want it to get conducted and uh, lose some amount of it so that uh, the, the wire or the material that is being used, it does not get damaged, right? So uh, that is one application. Another one uh, is the fuel rods, which is used in nuclear reactor. Right. And then similarly, any, uh, as you mentioned, uh, any uh, process uh, where there is like, especially the ones uh, which are like the exothermic reactions, which are uh, happening on a, a continuous basis or a continuous reactor where we have uh, 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 an exothermic reaction taking place. So you, so you would want to uh, extract the heat out of it or else it will just keep on, uh, I mean, it will just keep on releasing the heat and then it might lead to an uh, uh, excess of temperature which even your material may not be able to handle and it might cause damage to the equipment right so these are the applications which we uh, must have heard about like uh, on a very common basis where internal heat generation is very important so for that we will consider an example uh, of a plain wall just like how we had considered to determine the steady state heat conduction without heat generation. So here as well, this is plain wall. And in this case, let's say these are the two extremes of it. And this is one section. Okay, so this is the element where you have your heat generation taking place uniformly, right? So this element with uh, the width of dx or uh, the length of dx has uniform heat generation. And because of this, there might be a temperature distribution across the both sides of the wall, right? Because it it will not lose heat only on one side, but in one dimension, but on the two sides of it, right? Like it will lose uh, the temp temperature. There would be some temperature here. It would uh, lose uh, some uh, some heat until this point, and then similarly here as well. So let's call this as T W one and this is TW2, okay? And uh, until here, let's say the, we call it as the length as X, this, are, this is the starting point zero, and this is the final length L. 
Okay. So heat conducted at a distance up to x will be defined like qx equal to minus ka dt by dx, right? And uh, because uh, this heat generation, we assume it to be, yeah, one more thing. So this heat generation, what we assume is on a volumetric basis. So when you have to define the total heat generated, total heat, total heat generated by the element will be equal to, let's say it is denoted as QG and will be equal to its cross-sectional area into its length into the heat, generate, uh, heat generation per unit volume, that is QG. Okay, so after this, so this is something like this. So this is Qx, then Qx, and there is some amount of heat which is generated uh, by this uh, heating element. And then there will be some heat which will be conducted out, which will be denoted as Qx plus dx. So your Qx plus dx, this can basically be defined as the heat which is conducted until x plus the differential amount of qx because that is uh, uh, qx by d uh, uh, qx into dx uh, is the amount of heat which will be conducted out of this and for this element uh, because it is occurring in only a uh, length which is up to dx, so we could take a differential of this amount of heat which is conducted un until x, right? Is it clear until this point? Yes, sir, understood. Um, uh, sir, yeah, generally d by dx of qx, we define it as q of x, uh, q of x plus dx minus q of x by dx, right? Sorry, uh, come again, please. Sir, uh, Divide. this equation, this last equation you have written, no, sir. Right. Uh, that one comes from the definition of the uh, derivation, the derivative. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then, this is the amount of heat which is conducted out uh, at x plus dx, right? But we also know that the same uh, uh, amount that is qx plus dx can also be written as qx plus qg, right? Because the heat which is conducted out is basically the amount of heat which is generated in the volumetric element, uh, in the heating element, correct? So, according to that, what we will have is QG is basically equal to D by DX of QX DX, right? And now putting in the terms what we have already defined, like this equation and this equation here. So what we will get is QG, a dx is equal to d by dx of minus k a dt by dx into dx, which will turn out to be minus 
k a d square t by d x square into d x and when we rearrange it and we rearrange this it will come out to be d square t by d x square plus q g by k equal to zero right and now uh, after doing the first integration so in this there will be a couple of uh, ways uh, or the couple of ways in which you can take the boundary conditions one second, one second, one second. Sir. yeah this final equation was capital q by is equal to a dx uh, which one are which one are you talking the, about the total heat generated by element uh, yeah so the total heat generated was uh, okay sorry ADX plus uh, okay. okay 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 sir. right so that's that is what we have taken here uh, in this equation let's say we'll define this equation as equation a this equation a so here we have just replaced the terms corresponding to each of it like what is capital qg and what is capital qx we have replaced it and then rearranged it in this way okay Can I erase the other part now? Yes, sir. So, now after we do the first and second integration of this equation, what we are left with is T is equal to minus QG by 2K into x square plus c1x plus c2 okay and now we consider different cases to define our boundary conditions so the first one being that both of the surface uh, i mean both the extremes both the surfaces have same temperature that means your tw1 is equal to tw2 is equal to uh, let's say tw which is some uh, some common temperature right and when we use this boundary condition to find out the integration constants what we end up getting is c2 is equal to tw and c1 is equal to qg by 2k into l okay pretty much straightforward as you must be knowing that we just uh, uh, I mean, we put the boundary condition that at, at x equal to 0, tw1 is equal to tw, and at x equal to l as well, your tw2 is tw. Right? So you just have to replace uh, the temperature term with uh, the value of tw. And input the value of x is equal to 0 and x equal to 12 respectively. So after this, your final equation, after finding out the integration constants and everything, would look something like this. So this is t is equal to qg by 2k into l minus x into x plus tw okay and after this uh, we i mean so so 
when there is any process where there is heat generation taking place you would want to still find out what is the maximum temperature uh, which can go in the system which we are considering right and which is at that point that uh, you are obtaining the maximum of uh, 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 the temperature which is possible during this process so how do you find out using uh, one of the principles of differentiation any idea for maximum sir yeah maximum temperature we, we differentiate with respect to uh, x here and then okay. uh, we'll equate it to zero right so when we differentiate this with respect to x so this term is anyways constant so this will turn out to be zero so dt by dx will be qg by 2k into l minus 2x correct so among these two terms qg by 2k this cannot be equal to 0 because if when we say that this is equal to 0 that means you are uh, volumetric rate of heat generation is equal to zero. And if we consider that, consider that, then we basically don't have any internal heat generation taking place. So this uh, term cannot be zero. Another one, the term which is left is L minus two X is equal to zero. This is possible. And when we solve this, you have L equal to two X, therefore X equal to L by two. So this is the location where you have maximum temperature in your system, which is basically a plane wall with internal heat generation provision. Okay. And how do you find out the temperature? The maximum temperature is in the equation governing the temperature distribution. You substitute the value of X as uh, equal to L by two. So substituting x equal to L by 2, you have T max is equal to QG by 2K L minus x into x having this x equal to L by 2 plus Tw, which is Qg by 2k into L minus L by 2 into L by 2 plus Tw. Solving this, you have uh, Ul L by 2 L square by 8, right? So Qg by 2k sorry qg by eight k into l square plus tw right so this is your maximum temperature within the wall did you understand until this part yes sir so pretty much straightforward. And uh, another uh, parameter that you have to find out is something that we had uh, considered. So what is the heat? transfer taking place towards both surfaces, right? Because Q 
is equal to minus k a into d t by d x. So this you have to find out at x equal to zero or x equal to l. So now you know what is uh, the expression for temperature differentiated with respect to x and then substitute uh, x equal to zero or x equal to l and then you will be able to find out what is the heat which is uh, being transferred towards both the surfaces. Correct? So this is basically nothing but Q equal to minus K A into Q G by two K into L minus two X and then finding it out at either X equal to zero or X equal to L, you will find the corresponding term for heat transfer towards either of the surface. Clear? This yes, example? Two minutes, sir. I'll write down. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Done, sir. Done? Okay. So can I erase the entire part? Yes, sir. Sorry, just a minute. Some there seems to be some issue with this. Okay. So after this, let's just try one small example. Okay. It shouldn't be much difficult. And after that, we'll take another case and uh, talk about its application then. Okay. So write down the rate of heat generation the rate of heat generation in a slab the rate of heat, ge heat generation in a slab of thickness 160 mm in a slab of thickness 160 mm is 1.2 into 10 to the power 6 is 1.2 into 10 to the power 6 watt per meter cube if the temperature of each of the surface if the temperature of each of the surface is 120 degrees Celsius. Then, <coughs> determine the temperature, 
then determine the temperature at the mid planes and the quarter planes. Then determine the temperature at the mid planes and the quarter plane. along with the temperature gradient along with their temperature gradient okay and uh, thermal conductivity is given by uh, the value 180 watt per meter degree celsius sir 180 yes 180 Watt per meter degree centigrade. Yes, degree centigrade. Okay. Sir, at uh, x equal to L by 2 and L by 4, sir? Uh, x equal to L by 2, L by 4, and 3 L by 4. Okay, sir. Sir, at uh, x equal to L by 4, uh, is the temperature 130 de 136 degrees centigrade? Uh, at, uh, at x equal to? Uh, L by 4. Uh, L by 4, what is the temperature? 136. Right, 136. Okay. Two L by 2 and 3 L by 2. Yes. Sir, 3L by 4 should also come the same, right, sir? Yes, it will also be same. Uh, 136 only. 136 only, yes. 
So at x equal to L by 4, temperature is 136 degrees Celsius. At x equal to 3L by 4, also temperature is 136 degrees Celsius. And x equal to L by 2, T is. What's the temperature at mid plane? Room servants. Okay. Sir, 141.3. Yes, 141.3. Right. So that is the temperature at mid plane. And you have to find out the temperature gradient at the mid plane and the quarter plane. That is dt by dx at x equal to L by 2 and L by 4. Sir, at L by 4, is it uh, 266.67? Yes. So, dt by dx at L by 4 is equal to, is it 266 or minus 266? It's 266 only, sir. Positive. Okay. And what about at L by two? Zero. Zero. Yes. Yeah. In in that term, we'll be having L minus two x now, sir. So Q 
qg by 2k into l minus x so dt by dx will be qg by 2k into l minus 2x right yes sir so do you mean to say that uh, there is no temperature if there is no temperature difference at the mid plane then how is heat conduction taking place sir uh, it, uh, uh that i am unable to discuss okay so before jumping into this so this is something which we derive so uh, sometimes when this is not giving us the proper explanation so what you have to do is we know that q a is equal to q equal to minus ka dt by dx or dt by dx equal to minus q by ka right and first is you have to find out what is your heat generated at each of those sections when you uh, i mean what is your qg at x equal to l by 2 and x equal to l by 4 and what is the total heat which is conducted out at each of these places and when you find out what is your q which is conducted out at these particular location locations you substitute it here and then you find it out because obviously when it is at mid plane when the temperature is max there has to be some temperature gradient right only then the heat will get conducted towards the either side of the surfaces of the wall correct if it is zero then you don't have any driving force and basically there should not be any heat conduction taking place then sir can you can you do it for this problem yeah so so q x equal to l by 2 that is defined by what is the amount of heat generated per unit volume into a into x right so qg is uh, how much is the value of qg 1.2 into 10 to the power 6 let's say cross section area then it's not provided as i mentioned then you have to take it as 1 and the thickness is 160 mm so at mid plane it is 80 mm which is basically your 0.08 right and how much is this value Ninety six into ten to the power three. So basically ninety six thousand watt per meter square, right? Because we are taking it per unit surface area. Similarly, Q at x equal to L by four will be defined as one point two into ten to the power six into one into zero point zero four because L is uh 0.16 meters would divide by 4 basically half of this so that will be 48000 watt per meter square correct yes sir 
and now your dt by dx will is defined as minus sorry uh, yeah q by k a so you know at uh, to find out dt by dx at x equal to l by 2 your q value was 96 so this is minus 96 thousand divided by k what is the value of k 180 and then per unit area so this will be some value which is uh, uh divided by 533.3 and it will be minus for the same reason that you have your equation q equal to minus k a dt by dx right the purpose of having minus is that uh it is moving towards the side where the when you take the temperature difference or the gradient it is moving from a lower end to the higher end. Uh, sorry higher end to the lower end so that's why your temperature gradient has to be negative correct if you recall our uh, class when we had talked about the, uh, the Fourier's law of heat conduction and why there should be a minus sign here yes sir. did you get this part Yes, sir. And similarly, at x equal to L by 4, the value that you mentioned was right, that is 266, but that also will be minus, minus 266. So this is how you have to find out the temperature gradient at any given point of your plane wall. Okay, sir. Okay. So, in the similar uh, assumption, let's say uh, you are given that uh, one of uh, the sides of the wall is an insulated wall. Okay. So, now in this case, you have an uh, insulated wall on one side. So that means in this entire system, this is the phase which will be having your maximum temperature, obviously, because it is an insulator. And from here, you will have the fall in temperature. This will be, let's say, some T max. Right. So if you just correlate it with uh, what you say, uh, the the previous uh, example so you have your highest temperature occurring at mid plane so you can consider this to be like an imaginary wall with the length almost twice the size of this but the temperature distribution something like this where both the walls both the sides of the wall have same temperature one side is the one which we are considering and the other one is the imaginary Whereas the insulated one has the maximum temperature, right? So this is basically how, this is basically another way of the way in which we can look uh, at our, uh, the case of uh, internal heat generation uh, in a plane wall where both surfaces have uh, the same temperature. Right, so in this case, when you assume that okay when you when one of the faces has an insulated when one of the faces is an insulated wall and another is having a temperature t uh, tw so then let's say this one had length of l so considering what we discussed right now so this would be the uh, another part which will have length l so this will be total length of 2l Right. And what we had uh, the equation for temperature in, in terms of x. So the same uh, different uh, integrated equation, but with different boundary, slightly different boundary conditions. What we will have is 
x equal at x equal to l you have an insulated phase so that's why at that point at that phase you will not have any uh sorry not this one but at x equal to 2l you will have t equal to t uh, tw and here dt by dx will be zero because there is no heat conduction taking place on the other hand as the on the other side of the wall right so in such cases you will have this boundary condition and when you apply it on the same integral equation what you will arrive is t max is equal to qg by 2k into l square plus tw right so in this case there is no heat generation taking place but in case if you have to find out what is the temperature distribution in a plane wall where you have one insulated surface and another uh, as the one which can uh, which is in contact with the ambient temperature so in that case you can find it out in this way okay so after this there is another case where you have obviously so the the first assumption was that the first assumption was that we have uh, temperatures same on the both sides of the wall the other one is tw1 is not equal to tw2 so using the same equation of temperature before that is the integral equation the there will be only change in the boundary conditions which will be like at x equal to 0 t will be defined as tw1 and at x equal to l t will be defined as tw2 okay so another thing is uh, this particular case has very less probability that it will might be asked in the exam because it uh, i mean the formula which comes out after uh, the sub substitution of the terms is fairly complicated and obviously as per uh, what we know about the gate exam is that you will not be asked to mug up such equations where you know it it basically becomes kind of a necessity that either you just mug up this equations without actually understanding the derivation or you actually do the derivation so that you finally arrive at this final equation while solving the question okay so using this boundary condition we obtain the temperature uh, distribution uh, equation finally in terms of qg by 2k into l minus x plus tw2 minus t oops, minus tw1 divided by l into x plus tw1 so the simple form what we had in our previous case for temperature distribution is now defined something like this in the case that is your second case where temperature of both surfaces are not same 
do you want me to uh, do the de deri uh, the derivation part uh, right from the uh, the boundary condition uh, section of this uh, i mean this the boundary not, condition uh, section of this one no 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 not no not needed right because uh, it's very much similar to like how we had done for the previous case except that we are just substituting uh, substituting a different value of temperature for each of the we are substituting in this equation no sir uh, t is equal to minus uh, qg by 2k into x square plus c1x plus c2 yes so this uh, let me just write it again so this we could find it from the term this t equal to minus, minus of qg by 2k into x into square x plus c1x plus c2 so substituting this x values and t values yes. we can get c1 and c2 yes so substituting this we get the equation of uh, i mean we uh, we get this final equation for temperature distribution i mean the okay. obviously like finding finding out c1 and c2 and then getting at uh, getting the final equation so let me just write it down in case if you want to so c1 what we get is tw2 minus tw1 by l plus qg by 2k into l and c2 we get it as tw1 sir hmm uh uh like uh, one question that uh next uh next time before class like uh, you are uh, please upload the zoom link in the whatsapp group sir oh okay this uh, time it wasn't done so okay okay uh okay I'll, i'll ask uh, the institute to do the same or else if not then i'll only paste it okay because uh, not... generally most of them people join through whatsapp jo uh, click the link in whatsapp and they directly join the zoom oh, how okay. i came through uh, using the gate iit account okay no but uh, uh, other students also must be having access to their gate iit account right yeah 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 they must be having but it, it will be easier no sir just copy paste okay. and okay okay sure so well, i mean for tomorrow's uh, class i last the institute or even uh, i'll do it by myself okay not a problem okay okay so is this part clear karthik yes sir right so uh, uh this is uh, again when you have to find out what is Uh, the t max you have to follow the same uh, procedure as what we had last time that is differentiating this equation with respect to x and equating it to zero you will find out the location that is uh, x value of x where you will have t max and substituting that value of x into this equation will give you the actual value of t max right okay so let's proceed further so now after so after this we have another application of heat conduction uh, with heat uh, i mean internal heat generation and that is for cylinders basically all the three forms which we studied before Okay. 
so for that again having a similar uh what do you say approach so uh do i what do you think do you should i uh, do the uh, derivation part or just give the final equation form what would be more feasible according to you uh, i mean i I'm, I'm fine with both of them okay i'll i'll just uh, uh, do it like this for uh, one case Fine. Sir, explain for this case and uh, for spherical, we can directly. Do. Okay. Right. So, this is your element where you have your this taking place. This is your element, this is your radius r, and this small gap here, this is your dr. Just like how we had a one particular section, the differential shell uh, section where uh, uh, the heat generation was taking place in that element, and then how does the heat conductivity take place? until uh, and after that point so for this heat conducted in the uh, up to the section to the section with radius r so q r will be equal to minus 2 pi k r l into dt by dr right heat generated similar to what we had in case of plane wall you have q g into 2 pi r dr into l right then heat conducted out at r plus dr will be q r plus d by dr of QR into dr again then equating the same which is qr plus qg is equal to qr in q of r plus dr dr of right and then substituting the equations this and this in the following one. You have your, and then for, I mean, and then after integrating it, what you will be having is T equal to minus of QG by K into R square by four plus C1 into ln of R plus C2. Okay, so this is the equation which still has some integral integration constants. And then the boundary conditions. So the first one is 
at r equal to capital r your temperature will be equal to pw right and then the second one is in this case another thing that we have to consider while deriving or while finding out the temperature distribution at first place is whatever the heat which is generated or conducted out until uh, uh, whatever the heat generated by uh, is generated by the element it is ultimately lost uh, by conduction at the surface as with i mean it is giving out to the ambient temperature too right so heat generated by the volume uh, and by the heating element is also equal to heat lost by conduction at the surface right so when there is uh, and there is heat generation uh i mean whatever is the total heat generated that will be equal to like qg into pi r square into l right because that was for only the volumetric element with the radius uh, dr and now this is for the entire cylinder qg into pi r square into l equal to minus of k into 2 pi r l into dt by dr where your r is equal to capital r right so based on these sir Uh, this uh, bottom equation minus q g by k into r square by four plus c one into what? Uh, uh, natural logarithmic ln oh. ln of ln r plus c two. Okay. Yeah. okay, so using this, what you find out is. your integration constant 1 comes out to be 0 and integration constant 2 comes out to be tw plus qg by k into r square by 4 okay and then what you are left with is the temperature distribution equation given as t is equal to tw plus qg by 4k multiplied by capital r square minus small r square so as and when you put the value of radius across uh, the cylinder you will find out what is the temperature of that at that particular uh, section of the cylinder Okay. Okay, sir. So this is the equation for cylinder. I mean, the approach is nearly the same. The only difference being the boundary condition. Okay, so that's why I mentioned about what the two boundary conditions are, and then replacing uh, uh, the value of R and this particular equation, which holds true for. the second boundary condition so just solving these two you will get what are your uh, integration constants and then replacing those integration constants in this equation here in this you will find out what is a what is your uh, temperature distribution equation okay clear kartik 
Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, and then again, same with finding out T max, differentiating with respect to R, and then uh, equating it to zero. So T max is T W plus Q G by four K into R square. This is your equation for T max. So, can you tell me where exactly is your uh, maximum temperature in case of a cylinder? I mean, with heat generation. Like in plane wall, we had it like exactly at the middle plane in the assumption that both surfaces have same temperature. So in this at case, where do you- At the center line. At the right. central line. At the center, right? At R, at R equal to zero, you will have your maximum temperature. So that is what something that you will find out when you differentiate this equation, right? So R at R equal to zero, you will have your T max and then substituting that here in this equation, basically this, this term gets eliminated and you are left with TW plus QG into capital R square by 4K. That is your equation for T max for a cylinder with volumetric heat generation. Clear? Yes, sir. So, so we'll just do one small example of this, okay? And then we'll take some uh discussion about the next topic sir one one minute sir one minute ah okay Done, sir. Okay. Okay, so just write down the question. A current of 300 amperes, a current of 300 amperes passes through a stainless steel wire, passes through a stainless steel wire of 2.5 mm diameter. of 2.5 mm diameter. The resistivity of the wire, the resistivity of the wire is 70, that is 70 into 10 to the power minus eight ohm meters, 70 into 10 to the power minus eight ohm meters. And the length of the wire, and the length of the wire is two meters. The length of the wire is two meters. If the wire is submerged, If oh sorry sorry just 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 one minute just one minute I mixed up the I mixed up the two uh, the two questions sorry uh, 
the uh, the the question is uh, a three mm uh, stainless steel diameter wire. Sir, one second. A three mm, a three mm diameter stainless steel wire, hundred meters long, hundred meters long, has a voltage of. As, as a, a voltage, as a voltage, as okay, sir. as a voltage of hundred volts, applied over it, applied over it, The outer surface of the wire applied over applied over it. I mean, up, uh, over the wire. Okay. The outer surface the outer of the wire surface. is maintained at hundred degrees Celsius. The outer surface of the wire. Is maintained at hundred degrees Celsius. Calculate the center temperature of wire. Calculate the center temperature of the wire and heat transfer coefficient And heat transfer coefficient on the surface of the wire. Sir, if one, it is, uh, sir, once can you repeat from this? Uh, calculate the the center temperature of wire. Center wire. Center temperature of the wire and the heat transfer coefficient. And the heat transfer coefficient on the surface of the wire if the wire is submerged, if the wire is submerged. In a fluid, the wire is submerged in a fluid maintained at 50 degrees Celsius. If the wire is submerged in a fluid maintained at 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Your thermal conductivity is 20 watt per meter degree Celsius. Resistivity. Is. 10 into 10 to the power minus 8. Ohm meters.
Sir. Yes, Karthik. Can we solve this problem, sir? I am unable to find uh, this QG. Okay. Like we have to use this voltage and resistivity, but uh, I don't know how. Okay. So thermal conductivity is given. Resistivity is given, and uh, we have to find out the center temperature, right? So, and uh, it will be good if you can uh, go through these concepts about uh, electrical conductance resistance because they have a good probability that they might be asked in. Uh, uh, I mean, in combination with the questions for the heat transfer, okay. So resistance, say R is given by resistivity into length by area. So your resistivity is basically this is 10 to the power minus 7. So 10 to the power minus 7. What is the length? Length is 100 meters divided by area. So uh, what is the cross-sectional area? By R. R is your 3 mm. So 3 mm is 0.5 mm, which is your 0.0015 square, right? So your resistance will be into the power minus five divided by pi into 0 0.0015 and by pi pi so this will be equal to 1.415 ohms right and rate of heat generation, rate of heat generation. I think you must be knowing this formula. Q is equal to Vi, that is voltage into current. Or when we, if we don't know the current, then it is given by V square by R. V, where V is your voltage, so voltage is 100, so 100 square divided by 1.415, right? And this will be equal to 100, this point. Two hundred one point four one five seven zero six seven watt seven zero six seven watt right so this is your QG seven zero six seven watt okay do you recall this equation Q equal to V I or Q equal to V square by R Yes, sir. Uh, this one I know. The resistivity. But, uh, I was know. unable to bring this uh, resistance resistivity. from resistivity. Okay, okay. So I, I hope from here you will be able to solve it, right? Yes, sir.
So you have to find out T max and heat transfer coefficient. So did you find out Pmax? Uh, just a second, sir. Almost completed. Hundred point nine. Hundred point nine. Uh, maybe I did. What did you uh, obtain the value of QG? Small I mean, QG, the volume. 10 power 7. 10 to the power 7. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me just check. Just a minute, okay, I, I think I got lost in some calculation. Right. Yeah, so it's come. It's uh, almost because in my case, I'm getting it slightly higher. So it's I I, I mean, in, without writing in terms of the power, I'm getting it one. 
जीरो जीरो टू ये थ्री जीरो जस्ट चेक इफ विथ दिस वैल्यू वॉट इज द आंसर दैट यू आर गेटिंग सर सेम यू डू इट सर वन बट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ डिड आई गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ स्मॉल क्यू जी और नो कैपिटल क्यू जी इज सेवन सेवन जीरो सिक्स सेवन वॉट्स राइट आई गॉट द वॉल्यूम एज सेवन जीरो सिक्स सेवन Into ten to the power minus four. Okay, just okay, sir. I I will write it. Okay, so like Q G is equal to capital Q G by A into L. So, so your capital Q G is seven zero six seven. Your area cross section. This one is pi into Zero point zero zero one five square in two hundred, right? Yes, sir. So, yeah. So after this, I got this one as the value. So this one zero 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 two eight three zero watt per meter cube. Yeah, I I got this one as QG. I mean, it's seven zero six seven. This is pi three point one four into zero point zero zero one five square into hundred. So that you are getting a seven point zero six five into ten to the power minus four, and this is seven zero six seven. Sir, this is seven zero six seven divided by. Sir, yes. If we if we see in the resistance, ten uh, hmm. power minus seven into hundred by pi hmm. r square. Right. Okay. Uh, hmm. If we put this uh, into the Q formula, mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, like. Uh, R resistance will be ten power minus five by pi R square. Okay. Sorry, a resistance will be. Resistance will be ten uh, power ten power minus five by pi R square. Right. If you put that into this formula, V square by R. Mm hmm. So our pi R square will go up. And in the bottom, you will be left over with uh, ten power minus five. Okay, sir. You are understanding or not understanding? One, but just one second. So uh, this is. Uh, this should be equal, is equal to directly ten uh, power seven, sir. Uh, okay, sir. We'll uh, we'll go through this. Okay, okay. R is uh, rho L by A. Rho L is ten yeah. power minus five. Yes. So V square is. We will put the area as the like that only, sir. We'll just uh, a okay. Okay, so then uh, this is what you are saying, right? V square is ten power four. 
yeah, we, okay. we, we will just you have QG to V square A by row L. Uh, this is your QG divided by AL. Right. So you have your area getting cancelled. So you have V square row I, uh, L square. Row, row only. Oh, one second. Ah, yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So what is if your V? V 10 power 4 is in the top. V, uh, v is your 100. Right. So hmm. that is your 100. And your row is 10, 10 power, to the power minus, minus 7. 7. Okay. And the L is also 100 only. So V square, L square hmm. cancel directly. And the row will come up uh, okay. as 10 power 7. Okay. okay, so QG is okay. equal to 10 power 7. Right, okay, sure. So, this yeah, even, one... even, yeah, even this makes sense. No, no, not a problem. So, it's fine. So, you use this approach and you got it as the T max as 100.9. Sir, every time I am seeing this pi r square is common and they hmm. like uh, shifting from numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator. Right, okay. So generally, uh, this final uh, QG is equal to 10 power 7. And for T max, we have this formula, right, sir? T double mm -hmm. plus QG by 4K into R square. Right. Oh, oh, one second. I, I think I made a mistake. Ah, I made a I made mistake. Sir, how much is the T max? You tell me. Okay. Hundred point three. Hundred point three. Hundred point two eight. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. I did mistake. Uh, in the final step, I multiply with pi. Okay. So now, did you get it? Yes, sir. Hundred point two eight. Yes, hundred point two eight. Ah. Now, uh, do you know how we how can we calculate uh, the heat transfer coefficient? Heat transfer coefficient. It's uh, fairly straightforward in the sense that uh, you have to assume that whatever uh, the heat is getting generated, uh, within the cylinder, it is entirely getting transferred in the form of convection to the atmosphere. So what is your internal, uh, what is your uh, heat generation or energy uh, generated in the rod? I mean, in the cylinder, that is your capital QG, right? Okay, sir. Capital QG is equal to T plus uh, HA delta T. HA delta T. Yes, but which, what is the area that you are going to take here? Is Will it be the uh, cross sectional area or which one? Uh, we'll take this. Outside the circumferential area. You mean the surface area, right? Yeah. Yes. So that is your 2 pi RL. Yes. So just equate QG equal to HA delta T. You know what is the delta T. You found out what is the yes. temperature of the wall. You know what is the temperature of the fluid. You know capital QG. You just have to find out H.
sir it is almost uh, 150 okay so the exact value is like around 149.97 okay yes. so the reason uh, why even i was persistent to give you uh, ask you the exact value is let's say you get a numerical problems where you have to have the answers accurate up to one decimal or two decimal so you have to be very precise in what is the exact value or what is the exact answer that you are getting right so uh, i mean with practice you will get it to always finalize the answer at least up to two decimal points right okay yes, yeah so your h value is 149.97 watt per meter square degree celsius and your p max is 100.281 degree celsius clear until now yes sir okay so for sphere i am not going to uh, derive the equation i'll just tell you the final uh, form of equation for it so uniform heat generation within sphere okay so for that you have uh, the temperature distribution equation given as t equal to tw plus qg by 6k into capital r square minus small r square you have t max again because in case of sphere as well you will have maximum temperature at the center so you have t max equal to tw plus qg into R square by six k, right? And then you can find out what is uh, the total amount of uh, heat generated by multiplying the QG into the volume of sphere. So QG is equal to four by three pi r cube into QG. That's all. These three equations. 